what we're going to be going over here is the direct materials budget. We're going to look at how we set this direct materials budget up and how we make our calculations. So looking at our diagram here for our various budgets. Well, we start out with our master budget here and then under our master budget we have our operating budget and our financial budget. So where does the uh, direct materials budget fit in here? So under our operating budget we have to set up our sales budget and then from our sales budget we have to determine our production budget and we also have the selling and administration budget here but to determine our direct materials budget here we have to take the numbers from our sales budget here and they are put into the production budget and based on our production quantities here then we can determine our direct material cost and quantities here and then to further expand on this our production budget uh, it has of course our direct materials budget here direct labors and factory overhead budget but there's two things we have to deal with with the direct materials here. We have to determine our budgeted amount here for direct materials and then we also have those payment amounts here, the cash payments that we're going to have to make here to buy the direct materials here. So these cash payments here, they really fall under the financial budget here, the cash budget here under our financial budget. Along with that, this financial budget we have our capital budget here and then our balance sheet budget. Okay, so going back to our direct materials here, we're going to have to determine our direct materials quantities and costs and so forth, and then we'd have to determine the payment amounts here for those. And then to expand on that, uh, our direct materials, direct labor and factory overhead, they would go into whatever we produce would go into our ending inventory, and then whatever we sell goes into our cost of goods sold and then that goes into our income statement. So this is where our direct material budget fits in here and it fits in under our operating budget. Okay, so let's just see what would be included here. So when we're dealing with this direct materials budget, we really have a five-step process that we go through here. And we're going to be going through an example here on how we calculate this direct materials budget. So we'll just go through this five-step process here to understand what what goes in here. So you might want to write these uh, quantities down or what our numbers down here. So for uh, first we go for a item A here we would have to determine the quantity of material needed for production and that's really going to come off that production budget and the production budget comes off the sales budget. So you would take the units that have to be produced times the quantity of material budgeted on a per unit basis. Okay and then for the quantity of material to be purchased here that equals the quantity of material needed for production. We got that from our first step here, A here. Then you would add to that the desired ending material inventory, and then you'd have to subtract the uh, beginning material inventory. Okay, so uh, you see where that, we, we needed these, uh, the quantity of material needed for production come off our first step here. And then for our next step here, the budgeted cost of material purchases, this is where you take, again, the quantity of material to be purchased, and that came off our step two here that we calculated, and then you take that times the budgeted material prices here. Okay, so the next thing we have here is the cost of the material used. Again, that equals the quantity, quantity needed here for production, and we got that off our first step here that we calculated, and then you take that times the budgeted material prices. And then finally here for the last step, this is for the, the cash payments for the direct material purchases here. This is where it equals the current period purchases paid in the current period plus prior period purchases paid in the current period. So there's two things we're going to have to determine here with this budget. We have to go through and we have to determine our direct materials budget here for the quantities and all those numbers here. And then we have those that cash payments for the direct materials, the purchase payments. That's what we have to deal with. Okay, so we're going to be stepping through a problem here using this uh, flow diagram or this five-step process. Okay, now for our calculations for our direct materials budget. And again, remember these are based on budget estimates. And we're going to be looking at it just in terms of a single product here. And then we're going to be just looking at it for one month here, the month of March. Okay, so uh, what you would have to do is remember you'd have to go through this direct materials budget for all your different products. And then you'd be, have to look at it for each month of the year here. But we'll just be looking at it in terms of this uh, March uh, month of March here, 3-1. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to determine your unit sales here, and that would be coming out of your uh, 
sales budget here. And for our example here, uh, for 3 1, we're going to be using unit sales of 11,000 here. And it's also going to involve our unit sales here for April and May. And for April, we have 12,000 units that we have to produce. In May, 14,000 units they have to be produced. So the next thing we have to know is we have to determine, determine our desired inventories here for both our materials and our finished goods. So for our materials, it's going to be based on 10% of the next period's materials needs for direct, direct material here. And for our finished goods, it's going to be based on 5% of the next period's sales here for finished goods. So really what you have to do here for our example you, and any example, you have to determine your desired ending inventory and it's usually based on the next period's sales budget. So that's why we have to determine our, uh, know our April and our May amounts here in our, uh, for our sales quantities. And then we have to, we're going to be doing that for both our materials and our finished goods to determine our ending inventories here. And then the other thing we're going to need here is our direct materials uh, input here. And we're going to only be looking at one one item here, we're, uh, for, uh, one unit here. So for this unit where we're manufacturing, it's going to require two different parts. But just remember, you'd have to be going through this for all your different uh, products that you're producing and all the different parts that you're producing on those products. And literally, there can be hundreds or many, many hundreds of uh, parts that go into each different product. But for our example, we're going to have just two per unit here, a uh, unit of production, and the cost input is $10 per part here. So total cost would be two times $10 or $20 here. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at our calculations here. So again, our direct materials budget, and again, this is for the March period here. So for our step one here, we're going to have to determine the direct material quantity needed for production. So this, we have to determine our units here from our production budget. And remember, our production budget is coming from our sales budget. So what we're going to do here is we're going for our production budget or the quantity of direct material needed here. It's going to be 11,050 units that we have to produce times two parts per unit to simplify this. And that's going to give us 22,000 100 parts that we're going to need here. But let's look at how we got into this 11,050 uh, quantity, 11,150 units that we're going to have to produce. Now, remember, this is coming off our production budget. Okay, so let's go and look at how we'd have made our calculations here for our production budget. And again, for the March period here. So uh, uh, we're going to, for our units of sales here in um, March here, we're going to have 11,000 that come off our sales budget. So we have to know what our sales budget and, qu and a quantity of units that we have to produce. Then we have to add to it the desired ending finished goods here. And that's going to be the next month here, April. So on, for the month of April, and remember that was based on 5% five percentage, five percent of the ending inventory here for finished goods. So 5% of the month of April's units that we have to produce is 12,000. That gives us 600. And then we have to subtract from that the beginning finished goods here. And then that's our month of March here. So again, 5% here is our budgeted amount here times the number of units here for March, 11,000 units. So that's going to give us 550. So we have to subtract here this beginning finished goods of 550 from our total amount up, uh, that we have up here. And that's going to give the units that have to be produced here for March at 11,050 units. Okay, so remember that coming off our production budget here. So going back to our example again here, the direct material quantity needed for production, and generally just remember there's only uh, two uh, unit here, it only has two, uh, one different part and it requires two parts here per unit. But you'd have to go through that for all your different products and based on your units, number of parts and so forth. So for our, back to our example, we have that 11,050 units that we have to produce times two parts here per unit. Again, we got our 22,100 parts. Okay, so for our next step here, the direct material quantity to be purchased. So this is the case here where you have to know the quantity of material needed here for production. We calculated that here, uh, 22,100 parts. Then we have to add to it the desired ending uh, material uh, inventory we have here. And then we'd have to subtract from that the beginning material inventory. And for our example, remember we based our ending inventories on that percentage here. And for uh, direct material, we've based it on a 10% percentage here. Then we would take that times the quantity here, and it's actually for the next month's production amount here of, of uh, 
April, the month of April, and that's going to be 24,200 uh, units that we have to produce here, so or parts that we're going to have to produce here. So let's look at how we got this 24,200. Okay, so we go back to our production budget here, same as we did here for the April or the March date we use for the April period here. So we have to do our unit sales here for April as budgeted at 12,000. Then we have to add to it the desired ending finished goods. And again, this is based on the next month here, the month of May. And then remember, that was based on that 5% figure that we needed here for finished goods times the quantity of units here for in May here, 14,000 units is going to give us 700 uh, units that we have here. And then we have to subtract our beginning finished goods from that. So again, this is the case where we go back to our April month here. Again, it's based on that 5% uh, quantity or 5% percentage here times the units here for April that have to be uh, produced here and that's going to give us 600 here. So uh, subtracting our beginning finished goods inventory here that we have based on that five percentage from our totals up here we're going to have to be the units that have to be produced here for April are 12,100 units. Okay so those are the units now for our parts remember it takes two pieces or two parts per unit here so two times 12,100 that's going to give us 24,200 a quantity of 24,200. Okay so you see where we had to go through this production budget here for the next month to determine the number of parts that we have for that month. Okay, so let's go back up to it. So our desired ending material inventory, that was that 10% here times the uh, April month here, that, that ending mo uh, month here of 24,200 we calculated. And then you subtract that here from the beginning material, that uh, beginning uh, material inventory here. And then again, it's based on that 10% amount times the number of parts here we have for a March here, 22,100. So uh, just for our calculations here, adding our material required plus the desired ending material minus our beginning uh, material here that we need, we're going to come up with a quantity to be purchased here at 22,310 parts. Okay, so now we have to determine our budgeted cost of the direct materials here of the purchases. So we just take uh, what we have here for C would be the quantity of material that needed to be purchased. We calculated that here at 22,310 times the cost here per part, uh, the budgeted material cost here per part at $10 per part. That's going to give us what, 22,310 times $10 per part. That's going to give us a total of 20, 223,000. $100. Okay, and then the next here, the budgeted cost of the direct material used here. And again, uh, this is the case here where uh, uh, it's going to be quantity needed here for production. So we get that off our what we needed here for production at 22100 Again, this is for the 3-1 date here. Okay, we got that. And then we take it times the co uh, cost of the part here or the a budgeted material price here, $10 per part here that we have. So that is 22,100 times $10 per part is going to give us $221,000. And then lastly here for our cash payments for the direct material purchases, that's really our current period purchases paid in the current period here, plus the prior period purchases paid in the uh, current period here. But we're just going to look at, uh, we'll just say in this example, we're just going to use our current period purchases here. We're not going to go into the prior period purchases. So that cost of direct material purchases here would be what we have here, the, what we, our budgeted cost here, direct material purchases at 223100 here. So just remember, you do have to look at both uh, prior period purchases here and current period purchases the amount you spent. Okay, so we've done our calculations here in a direct materials budget here for 3-1. All right, so just remember we had to go through these steps. So let's just go and let's just review this one more time here by for going through our direct materials budget here and the numbers that we went through here. So for step one, we have the quantity of material needed here for production. That equal the units that have to be produced. That comes off our production budget. Production budget comes off the sales budget. And we take that times the quantity of material per uh, budget here per on a per unit basis. Remember, we're doing everything here 
uh, it, you have to do, go through all your different products, all your different uh, materials that are included in your products to determine the total direct material budget. But we just did it in terms of uh, one unit here and only uh, one part or two parts per unit basis here. And then uh, next item here, the quantity of material to be purchased here equals the quantity of material needed here for production plus the desired ending material inventory minus the beginning uh, uh, material inventory here. And then uh, C here, that was step three, our budgeted cost of uh, material purchases equals our quantity of material to be purchased times the budgeted material prices. And then the cost of material used is just, again, the quantity uh, uh, needed here for production times our budgeted material prices. And then finally, our cash payments for the direct material purchases equals our current period purchases paid in the current period plus prior period purchases paid in this current period. So you can see, uh, just going through our thing here again, just to see where everything links up here. For step one, uh, we had to take the uh, quantity of material here needed for uh, production here, went into step two, where you use that number here in step two. And then for step three here, the budgeted cost of material purchases, you needed the quantity of material purchased here. And that came in from our step uh, two here, or B item here, so you can see how they build on each other. And then finally, our cost of material used, we had to take a quantity needed from production that we calculated up here times, in this case, our budgeted material prices. So just to see how the flow goes here and on your different steps that you have to use here for setting up your direct material budget. So remember, direct materials, it involves a lot of different materials here in the different products. So you have to go through each of your product lines here, and then you'd have your bill of materials that you'd be going through for uh, all the um, uh, materials that are used in a particular product. Okay, so that'll pretty much summarize our discussion here on the direct setting up this direct material budget and making the calculations.